It's anything you put on the internet, you want to make it compelling that somebody's going to click on it. Oh my gosh. 30 pieces in 30 days. 30 pieces in 30 wow. days. Most people that call themselves artists couldn't do that. <laughs> This is my first time doing the 30 day challenge. Um, and I'm Shakes and my name is Anastasia. <laughs> my name is Andrew and I am the director of the 30 day art challenge. We've been doing it here in Seattle for 14 years. This show has everything you can imagine. There'll be over 3,000, 3,500 canvases in a room as big as what we're standing in here. And there will be everything from someone who does a pen and ink drawing to a cartoon to the most beautiful calligraphy, artwork, painting you can imagine. And I love it. I it's love being part show. of it every yeah. year. And it's quite a challenge. Find those teachers, those guides that are going to help you in that direction that you're already going. The Seattle art scene is pretty active and every month there's an art walk. So we have this um, persistent monthly deadline of like doing work, new work, presenting it, exhibiting it at a show. The community is very receptive and there's like this ticking clock that every month you've got to do some new work. Um, the 30 Art Challenge is like a concept that is meant to inspire people to develop 30 new pieces in 30 days and participate in the December Art Show. This is my third time doing the challenge. As an artist, you explore and you, you find those things that you, you know, gravitate towards. So I'm hoping to kind of like develop my process more than anything when I do these. That's really what school should be, is help people like develop their creative faculties. I drew pretty much all day in class when I was in school, the entire time I was in school. It's always kind of been my like background noise, just drawing. If I'm not doing it, it's you know, something's definitely missing. It's like we all have this like little connection, but we're all so vastly different. I'm still thinking that some things aren't finished. And I'm 100% sure that I'll have many pieces in the show that aren't finished, uh, from my opinion. You know, your artist is your worst critic. You cannot find a, a worse critic than yourself. And so, you know, to have somebody else say, oh, you're not good enough to enter this show, that would be pretty devastating for me. <laughs> One of the challenges we've included into the challenge is interviewing each one, each artist, as to what their backstories are, what their what they've set up for their own personal challenges, and what they're um, trying to achieve, some of their goals. I'm Ann Erlandson, and this is my first time doing the 30-day challenge. Hi, uh, I'm Paul Kastinski. Uh, it's second time I'm doing it. I'm having a hard time squeezing what I want to paint into 8 by 10 inches. So I always try to go bigger. <laughs> For an artist to like, you know, to push yourself, it's a great challenge. But I tend to paint really slow. And so this is pushing me to paint faster. And in, t in order to do that and to achieve the same quality that I, you know, want to put out there, I have to really. Um, work on my intuition and trust my first instincts and just go with it and go, okay, that's good. Stop. <laughs> I really enjoy painting. I just fall in love and I like to paint. If I have time, I want to paint day and night. I don't, I just, I just love it. And I want to challenge myself. You know, I, I don't, I cannot just see sit at home and paint. I need, I need some target. 
I need something different, and I want to change, and I want to grow, and I want to do something different every time. And I found that this is so interesting, so I just, I just participate, and I found out I didn't miss the de deadline. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sarah Cheesdale. I got into the 30 day art challenge uh, because of a friend of mine. She had done it last year. So by interviewing them, they're able to share with us the story. The, the difference with this show is that it's non-jury. So that means anyone can enter. The way in which each person attacks their challenge is personal to them. And the work that comes through, the different craftsmanship, the uh, materials and supplies that they have worked with or have never worked with plays such an amazing um, role in the challenge. Well, hi, I'm Brooke Borcherding and um, this is my third 30-day challenge. Um, and so it, it was kind of this uh, compulsive like need to create something. Like you start from blank uh, surface and then you have something and that's amazing like it just it made me feel really productive and it was it was addictive so it's really fun to see what you can get away with and as a working artist I've struggled with that in the past year of finding enough time to feel satisfied that I'm making enough work and then also being able to make the work for specific shows in time <laughs> My name is Stasia Burrington. I've been a working artist in Seattle for about five years. Um, and I did this challenge once before. I don't find that I'm as critical as I used to be, I'm not even close. And I think it's because I've just gotten into this um, habit and pattern of produce, 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 make, make, make. And um, so I'll find like, I don't love everything, but then once in a while I'll really surprise myself and something will come out and I'll be like, oh, I didn't expect that that's really exciting because um, I think the less you focus on the end result and more just the process and then like you're almost an observer uh, of this creative process too and it's exciting for you because you're kind of watching this thing going and seeing what happens and I, I think being critical and overthinking it does clog up that pathway and prevent like happy accidents and surprises. And As I've interviewed artists over the years the, the footage that I've accumulated of everyone's personal nuance, what they have overcome and what they have discovered in themselves. And for me, participating as an artist and as the exhibitor, it's been, it's a, it's different, it's difficult to wear two hats because at one point I'm trying to reassure everybody and at the same time, I'm nervous myself, wondering if my stuff's gonna go. Like, if, is it is it gonna work? Do people like it? I, and so, like, there's like this dichotomy that I put myself in, being a participating artist and the exhibitor. So one of the questions that's asked every year, everyone wants to know why the art is so separated. Each artist's work isn't all on one place in one panel. It's scattered, it's like a shotgun. We then arrange them vertical versus horizontal and establish them on certain panels. Then we tack those panels to the walls on the perimeter and the freestanding panels in the middle of the room like a passionate it's, it's important what we're doing is an important element that I think like we have overlooked in our culture when you see young people reaching out and offering new creative images in the same exhibition with a professional who's been doing this for 45 years that's a powerful juxtaposition Perhaps the artist is presenting us with the solution that we're seeking in other parts of our lives. And so when you come to a room full of images, 
it's a beautiful experience to see all of the possibilities and potentials right there before you. But this There seems to be a conflict whether the success of the show is did you sell any work or not. And trying to encourage people to get out of their regular routine and create something new is itself the challenge and it is the success. Yes. I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> And so to accomplish completing the 30 day art challenge in itself is the triumph of the show. Was this your first time? This is my first time. Yep. Yeah, this is my third or fourth, and uh, very cool. It's fun. Always exciting. I, I want to do this again and again. It's oh, I know, and it really was a stress because you had to do. You had to do at least once. Holy <laughs> day. With the internet and with the virtual connectivity of our lives, after the art exhibit is over, we still have a lot of really valuable art to sell. And creating a way, a vehicle, and a e-commerce website, both for the 30 Day Art Challenge as an institution to exhibit and foster and promote individual artists, but also teaching the artists how to build their own e-commerce websites where they can then fulfill their own independent creative aspirations. They can have an Etsy store. They can create um, information products and sell through Amazon. Uh, they can do art classes. They can give a marketing consultation of different materials that art companies want to test and say, hey, try our watercolors and see what that's like. Um, we need artists to you know, experiment with it. Tell us what you think about our product that we're going to take to market. These are real, realistic, opportunities for people to find another way to supplement their creative passion as well as at the high end make some real celebrities and some stars